Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about a financial planning topic that unfortunately isn't covered as often as it should be. That's long-term care insurance. Before we get started, please click subscribe to my channel to check keep up with all of my latest personal finance content. And check out the link you see on your screen for a message from our sponsor, The Motley Fool, where you can get the top 10 stocks to buy right now for your portfolio. So long-term care insurance is something that too few people are aware of, especially people in my age range and below, which is 40s and younger. So long-term care insurance, as it, as it sounds, it's an insurance policy, but the reason it's so important, and here are some statistics that you may not be aware of. About 50% of people over the age of 65 are going to have long-term care costs at some point in their life. This doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be stuck in a nursing home. This could also refer to things like assisted living, in-home help, and a lot more people need that than you might think. 15% of people will have over $250,000 in long-term care costs, and the average cost of a private room in a nursing home is over $100,000 per year. Now, that's the average. If you live in a high cost of living area, it can be much, much higher. So the goal with long-term care insurance is you don't want your assets to kind of dwindle over time because of these unexpected long-term care expenses. You don't want to run out of money because you need health care. That's a, a, you know, it, there are ways to prepare for it. And long-term care insurance is one of them. So long-term care insurance, what it does, it can pay for services that you need as you age, including assisted living facilities, nursing homes, and in-home caregivers. Now, there's a common misconception that Medicare will cover it if you need nursing home care, if you need in-home care, or if you need assisted living. Medicare usually pays for short-term nursing home stays and short-term issues. It does not usually pay for any sort of long-term care. So long-term care insurance can help ensure that your assets aren't going to be completely consumed in the event that you need long-term care. So how does the insurance work? So as I mentioned, Medicare generally picks up the tab for some shorter term costs. So long-term care insurance doesn't kick in till a certain amount of time. Think of this as kind of the long-term care insurance version of a deductible. Instead of starting the day that you need nursing home care, it'll kick in after a certain number of days have passed. 90 days is a very common term. Um, there are policies that kick in immediately, but they'll cost significantly more. And most policies provide benefits for anywhere from one to five years. The average person who needs long-term care fits in this range. There are plans that have longer care terms and for life plans. You can get a long-term care policy that will pay for the care you need for, for your entire life. Uh, they do exist. They're not as common as they used to be, and they are more costly. And there's usually a maximum per day benefit. So long-term care insurance might cover, you know, $100 a day or something to that effect. So the earlier you buy long-term care insurance, the lower your premiums will be. That means you're going to be paying into their, the program for a longer amount of time. So the, up, the monthly costs will be lower. About 50 to 55 is kind of the sweet spot when I suggest to clients that they start thinking about getting long-term care insurance. And just to kind of, let's put, throw some numbers in here. The average monthly long-term care insurance premium for a 55-year-old man in the U.S. was $2,220 per year as of last year. And this is for a policy covering up to $165,000 in total benefits that's spread over a number of years. For a 55-year-old female, you might be surprised to learn the average premium is a lot more, $3,700. The reason is that females tend to live longer than men, so there is a higher probability that they will need long-term care at some point in their lives. Now, if you are a married couple, there's some good news that you can save money by buying a joint plan. And by the way, these premiums are annual, not monthly, so don't let the cost completely scare you away. It's not cheap, but it's not, this is an annual premium. So the average 55-year-old couple who bought long-term care insurance paid just over $5,000 in total annual premiums. This is a considerable expense, and that's honestly one of the biggest deterrents why people don't get it. But it can be a very small expense compared to the costs if you end up needing assisted living or anything like that for a few years. And another item of good news, long-term care premiums 
can be tax deductible as a medical expense if you itemize deductions. Um, any healthcare expenses in excess of 7.5% of your adjusted gross income can be deductible, and long-term care premiums absolutely count as a healthcare expense for this category. So if your long-term care premiums plus your health, other health costs for the year are over 7.5% of your adjusted gross income, you can potentially write them off. So there's that to keep in mind as well. So there are a bunch of, those are just the averages that we went through on the previous slides. The costs vary with a bunch of factors. The two biggest ones are the age at which you get your policy. I mentioned 50 to 55 is kind of the sweet spot when I suggest that people start thinking about it. But if you're younger than that, there's no harm in getting a couple of quotes or anything like that. Um, so your age when you get the policy, the longer you wait, the more expensive it's going to be. Your health when you get the policy, the insurer will kind of assess how likely you are to need long-term care. Um, your marital status, I mentioned you can, can save money by combining a plan with your spouse. Uh, your gender, um, mentioned females live longer, so their policy premiums tend to be a little higher. Whether or not you want inflation protection, which I would absolutely recommend an inflation rider with long-term care insurance because the costs do not get lower over time. And this adjusts your policy's maximum benefit by, say, 3% a year uh, going forward until you need it. Um, it depends on the maximum coverage amount. Some policies cover a certain amount per day. Some cover more. Um, some cover for one year. Some cover for three years. Some cover for five years. And some cover for lifetime. And that waiting period I mentioned before your benefits start, 90 days being the most common. And it goes up from there. So the million dollar question here, do you need long-term care insurance? It depends on a few factors, um, including and especially your retirement assets. If you have, say, several million dollars saved for retirement, and you and the, if you end up in needing assisted living or nursing care or anything like that, it wouldn't completely destroy your finances. You may not need it. But if you if a few years of assisted living would really put a dent in your financial health in retirement, it could be worth considering. So and one thing to keep in mind, if you do decide to look for long, long-term care insurance and you're looking at how much these plans cover, Keep in mind that it doesn't need to cover everything. The point is to bridge the gap between what Social Security and your other retirement income won't cover. So if the cost of assisted living is estimated to be, say, $6,000 a month, and you have $4,000 in other retirement income, you just want to bridge that $2,000 gap to make sure that you're not tapping into your retirement assets. Um, some employers offer long-term care plans, it's worth noting, so that could be a really good place to start. And unlike employer-based life insurance, this uh, long-term care insurance is usually portable if you leave, so you can take it with you. So hopefully you found that primer on long-term care insurance helpful. I tried to cover what I could in a, a relatively short video. Um, please leave any comments you have, and I will do my best to answer each one of them individually. Thanks for joining me. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click subscribe if you don't subscribe to my channel already. And as always, this video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. Be sure to visit www.fool.com slash Frankel to receive the 10, top 10 best stocks to buy now.